I'm, I'm having to come, my guess. The discussion is going on even when we are off air. Okay, let's put it on there. Let's hear this discussion about uh, what young MPs can do to change the narrative vis-a-vis -vis the pressures they tell us they are facing this morning. Peter Salasia, who's uh, uh, the new MP for Mumia Assist, has some thoughts. Go ahead. Okay, I, I, I think what is happening right now with these agencies that are just trying to do politics in this matter, because there's nothing new they're talking about, as we have just told you from the word go, is that MPs in 2009 and 2008, around that they were earning around 800. Today they are talking about 710. So in fact, they, have, they are getting less than what. So I think uh, that agency should uh, just, uh, marry because herself she's getting almost 2 million. So when she's frustrating, so that is none of my business anyway. Let's talk about, look at this issue of um, what the Yatani was talking yesterday when he was addressing the, the senators. He's also trying to please the senators uh, about the issues of the CDF. Because look at the CDF, when we are talking about the, we didn't pass the BBI from the word go. So, which means that all the functions that are being coordinated by the national government are being, uh, are being done, facilitated by the member, uh, the member of parliament. And that is the issues of uh, the primary education, the secondary education. So if we, as they are saying, that uh, uh, the CDF Act that uh, did not go through the Senate, uh, we're assuming that. Let's assume. Uh, if we go by that, it means that uh, the governors, they are only supposed to give the bursaries to the, uh, the ECD, children. Uh, because that is the early, early whatever. So, so, so there's nothing that's talking about that uh, it didn't go through the Senate, that there is a function of what, what. So that is what, again, we should be. But what is very more important is that um, I was so much impressed uh, yesterday in our, in our training when the ministries of uh, uh, the, the, the CBK and uh, Foreign Affairs, they were telling us the challenges that Kenya is having about the economy. And that is what we should be discussing right now. Because you look at our economy, right now they are talking about uh, the issues of uh, uh, the commodity, uh, uh, the, the inflation, the cost, and how we can mitigate about that. And so the question that we shall be asking as the young parliamentarian <coughs> is that what happened with, uh, because they look at uh, the, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, we don't know how long it's going to take. So the thing that we are going to talk about as young parliamentarian is that how, what happened with the Tulo, uh, with the oil production in, during the, in, uh, the uh, oil production? What is happening with the wind power? What is happening with the, uh, the, the water, hydro, whatever? Because those are, if we look at that, is what is going to reduce uh, because of the issue of the fuel and all that. So, uh, and also about the issue of the budget. You look at the budget, uh, uh, the, the two organs here. Member of Parliament, we are having the budget, we are doing the budget. Ministries are doing. So you find like whatever the government comes up with, it's what is going to be imposed on the member of parliament to pass. So we must also come up with the legislation because these guys, they just come and say that the ministry, uh, if this project was not done in the last year, it is pro uh, propelled to the subsequent year. So what I think right now as where Kenya is right now, and I would also want the, the, the young parliamentarians who are here to join us, hands, is that, and this is the reason why a majority of the people voted for the Kenya Kwanza, as you can say. People want money in their pockets. So for me, the discussion we should be having is that how are we going to make our economy better and having maybe reducing the infrastructure, more of uh, whatever, and make issues of making money be in the hands of the people. But uh, these agencies that are just uh, playing politics, CDF is there to stay. Uh, it's, it's helping a lot. So uh, Yatan, you retire well. Uh, Leave alone as uh, help our people. Okay, I don't think you need to tell him retire. Well, the constitution will will do that. Honourable Salasi, tell me this briefly, and then and then I'll come to you, Jerry. Uh, you've you've outlined clearly the state of the economy, the global economy, the Kenyan economy, and this has been brought out quite clearly by President William Ruto, yeah. even in his speech at the UN General Assembly. Mm -hmm. How powerful a statement would it be for young parliamentarians like the three we have here in studio today? to say that because we understand where we are as a country, because we understand the challenge with our finances at the moment, we've had it from the central bank, we've had it from the, the finance, uh, the treasury, CS and others, that because we are under special circumstances, similar to the circumstances that Kenya found itself in at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, where the president and his deputy, the then president Uru Kenyatta and the deputy announced that we are willing to take even a pay cut in solidarity with Kenyans 
because of the challenges they face. What if you young MPs today called a press conference on the grounds of Safari Park where you're holding that induction uh, and, and, and said, we understand that we have some unresolved issues with the SRC, yeah. but because of where Kenya is today, and we understand what Kenyans are going through, we are willing to agree for now on, we consider this a pay cut, which we shall revisit at a later date, but for now, let's fix the economy. What powerful message might that be? for your constituents today watching Salasi. How do you respond what is, to that what, 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 what is uh, the real issue here is, is about uh, the, the increase in the commodity of uh, uh, maybe fuel uh, that has been brought by the war on the other side. So what we should be now discussing is, as I've just highlighted before, we need to go for the green energy way. And this is going to, because, the, because you realize that this country, we're importing everything. And most of the investors right now, they will prefer going and doing business in other countries and come back and sell to us. You're still not answering my question. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to answer me, Binjeri? Are you going to try and answer my question? So that we move away from this headline and you guys can get to work without the distraction of the back and forth. Because a week from now, we'll have another headline that you met SRC and, and you agreed or did not agree. Jerry, what do what um, you say? I think what I can say is that I will jump that with, I will not touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> um, but what I want to say is we why, have to why look not? at the reality. We have to look at the reality of things and we cannot live in a bubble or rather we cannot exist in a vacuum. I think Gigi has mentioned that he, after, he, after this interview, he's going to see um, a constituent of his who has a bill at KU hospital. Um, I have, a constituent of mine who has a pending bill at KU Hospital, um, <clears throat> the body of the child has been at the morgue since February this year. They have not been able to bury their family. I have gone to court, we have fought about it. I have written several letters um, to the um, hospital. We have tried to raise as much as we can. I also have now another case uh, from a constituent of mine who has a pending bill of 900,000 at Matari um, Hospital in Nyeri and is not able to bury their son either. So I think we try to escape the reality of this and we cannot have quick fix um, solutions to things that need um, to be sorted out conclusively. So at the end of the day, let us fix the economy. If we take a pay cut, say like you're suggesting, how much would we save, right? How much money are we losing in other avenues? So I think we, we are narrowing this issue to it just being about the members of parliament. Is it, do you want to tell me that um, with certainty you believe that it is because of the salaries we're earning that um, we consistently have issues in the economy? No, that is not it. So we need to fix the real issues in the economy. What is not working? Um, and like I've said, and my colleagues have argued that NGCDF needs to be there because you can actually feel the real impact on the ground. The government, does it have the capacity to map out the needs of our people in every corner? We do a census um, once every, um, every period after it has lapsed to collect new data. And I can assure you there are people even um, under the, the Ministry of, of, of uh, Social Affairs that have never um, received any stipend from the government. Why? Their database is there, their name is there, the bank account is there, but someone else benefits from that. So there are all these loopholes in which we are losing money. So it is not about members of parliament earning a certain amount, but we need to deal with the real situation of the economy. And I think you mentioned subsidies. And I believe, of course, it's also an issue that um, the, the media decided to sensationalize for whatever reason. And the, the IMF and the World Bank had even advised Kenya that we can no longer sustain extension of the subsidies. And we all know that subsidies, from a factual point, they distort the market. You know, they, um, they, they are prone to abuse. Um, they can be um, misused by other agencies who are trying to make a cash out of it. So at the end of the day, let us say this is a real situation. So this is where we're at. This is where we want to go. What do we do to get there? And let us not dilly-dally with the nitty-gritties. And I think the non-issues, let us dwell on the real issues that we can fix so that we have long-term solutions and not quick fixes. Okay, okay. Maliba, you've been itching to jump in. Gigi, and don't worry, I'm coming to you. Uh, I'll start from this particular point. I do not think that your question to Honda Basalasia was fair. Uh, to ask young parliamentarians, for example, to say that we are not going to talk about this issue and then we will probably come in at a later date. This is an induction. 
at an induction, you get to be talked to by every other stakeholder, including the HR. So when the HR meets you on the induction day and you've just been employed at RMS, do you tell the HR guys, I don't want to hear about this salary, I've just come here to serve citizen, I'll talk to you later on. I thought that was unfair. Now, moving on swiftly. It's like with your private business <laughs> versus public uh, comparison. The principles are the same, Higgs. So, uh, moving on swiftly, <laughs> I, I, I need to say this. I think when we take a lot of time talking about the MPs, packs and salaries, I think for me we are missing the bigger point. The bigger point for me is CDF, but let me just uh, give my last submission on this particular issue. Article 41 of the Constitution talks about labor relations. <clears throat> and I'll just tell you, mm -hmm. number one says that everyone has got a right to fair labor practices. I don't think we treat MPs to fair labor practices. They are workers like any other. These are the people who, from the work they do, everybody is sensationalizing. We are reporting the way we want, and they already have, are coming in at a place where they have to defend themselves, including guys who've just come in the other day. I don't think that is fair. The other thing is that every worker has got a right to fair remuneration. Uh, Honre Bosele, the former MP for Kaspulka Bond, I think was one at some point the youngest MP. He's no longer in parliament. Just sent me a text and said that even in those days, averagely he will spend about 600,000, whether he likes it or not. That is so. Per year, per month? Per month. Per month. They, to just take care of smaller things here and there. So, and he says that even in their days, that's what he will spend in the, uh, in the constituency. So, uh, so fair enumeration. Do these guys grow trees with money? Definitely no. We need to talk about those issues. Uh, number two, uh, reasonable working conditions. I don't think these guys have got reasonable working conditions. The only place they are safe is in parliament. Once they go outside, they become ATMs. Once they go outside, they become witch doctors. They become everything that people want in society. They must be magicians who deliver. Is that a fair working condition? Definitely no, but are we looking at that? We don't want. The other thing is this, to form, of course, and participate in uh, and, and, activities. And who, who do you blame for that ATM culture? It is a, it is a societal problem, mm -hmm. and we therefore cannot isolate them and try to solve this problem without looking at context. Context, of course, from a media perspective, will be pretext, the text itself, and then post-text. Mm -hmm. So are we able to look at that issue all round? These guys are supposed to join, of course, a labor union, but then a parliamentary service commission should be acting around that. But, you know, we also must call out SRC on two things. That SRC has got banditry tendencies. <laughs> Uh, of course, it then join, brings all the other people into lynching these guys. So, uh, populist moves and populist can, statements. Can, can you give your point without using such terms? They're not here to defend themselves. Banditry is a strong, it's a strong term. They, 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 no, but that is exactly what they are doing. As in, we are in a country that has got sanction clauses in the constitution. So, as they quote and quote call out members of parliament, we should also be able to call them out. Mm -hmm. What I really wanted us to talk about is that are we able to pay members of parliament very well and take away CDF? Because for me, that is the elephant in the room. What is very well? What, how much is very well? Fair well, number one, fix the system so that they work and these guys don't have to complain and they don't have to be <coughs> the, <coughs> the miracle workers of their constituents. Who is responsible for fixing that system? All of us. All of us. Okay, who, but, is, but, who is elected to fix the system? Maybe that's what who, I should ask. Who is elected? You know, that is just delegated. Article 1 of the Constitution says all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya. And that they can exercise it either directly or through delegation. They have just delegated here. So when we speak about it, we must run away from the temptation to try and make this thing a problem of a few. This idea, and you know, it is a politics of laziness where, and a politics without the ideology where we actually have to frame things as in them versus us. That we just did elections a month ago, we now have got another attempt at trying to have them versus us, the people versus MPs. We had the people versus Chibukati. Now we have got SRC and the people of Kenya versus MPs. It cannot always be that way. What I actually want to talk about, and I think is a bigger problem, is that I said earlier on that parliament is for me the topmost governance organ. If it were in an organization that is the NDC, the National Delegates Conference, and that we define parliament as the manifestation of a people as a government. Now, parliament has stopped being parliament for one reason, CDF. CDF, of course, was our attempt at devolution. It was our pilot project at working out devolution. Now that we have got devolution, CDF in its form offends the principle of separation of powers. And we will argue and say a lot of English here about this issue. But I can tell you, scholars out there can actually do a technical paper that links the, f 
the fall of parliament. I want to call, you know, like the most important thing for parliament is representation. That concept is heavy. It goes to article number one. Mm -hmm. All sovereign power belongs to the people. These are the people's representative. Then we talk about legislation. And then we talk about oversight. What we have in parliament today are a lot of CDF managers and not legislators. We have got a lot of CDF guys who can do uh, small miracles with their 100 million they get with CDF and not people who can do oversight. We are talking about a national debt that went over the, the ceiling. Where was parliament when, when that was happening? Because what has happened is that CDF has become uh, uh, something that uh, guys in the executive can actually look at as you mismanage it. Then on the day when you speak up on the day, uh, for example, when they steal some money on SGR, then they remind you that we have got this file. And you therefore are silenced. So where is the voice of the people? There is a direct link between MPs' uh, role on oversight actually dampening and CDF. That is true. So can we pay these guys well even if they want 2 million shillings and take away CDF? Also, a lot of these guys went back to parliament because they did CDF well. That is not their primary role. Mm. It's true CDF is working well. It's true because it has been there longer. But it can, we have tested it and it's working. It just doesn't have to work with them. These guys who are coming in, and I actually have to say this, of course, the three of them are seated here. We cannot be electing CDF managers. We need legislators. We need people's watchmen. We need representatives. A lot of these guys who are in parliament, honestly, you will ask them, why haven't you contributed? And they'll tell you, are my people complaining? Yeah, happy. You, because your people CDF are, are happy because well. CDF is working. But is that the JD, the job description of a member of parliament? So let us give these guys, even if they want two million shillings, but take away CDF so that parliament can go back to being parliament. That house has got important work to do. But it's not doing that work because they are chasing everything else. So CDF has become a petty cash kitty for members of parliament because if you want something, then you, uh, I write you a check of 5,000 shillings. Of course, the public does not know whether it is your money. They don't care, by the way, mm -hmm. if it is your money or it's CDF. And that don't care attitude applies to everything. And that is why these guys are speaking out and we don't want to hear. Okay. Pay these guys well, take away CDF. Take away CDF. GG, yeah. take away CDF. You know... <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to, to get that, uh, f f first of all, to say on your comment about calling out uh, uh, and, and saying that you want a pay cut and everything. I, I want to say something. I'm a responsible leader elected by the people. And I am not sensational. You know, I can't, I can't, you know, this, this, this is fine. A media person can do that. Say one woman against the grid of MPs. I, I'm not allowed to do that. I have responsibility and I have people that I represent. So I must I owe them the responsibility of telling them the truth. So first of all, I want to put this in perspective. Supposing you cut the pay of all MPs, all of them, the 349 of us, and you say you're not going to be paid anything, you'll only have absolved this economy of 2.9 billion for the entire year. That is probably 0.1 percent, or 0. I mean, it's a small percentage of the economy of the budget that we're going to be reading, right? But then you must ask yourself, as a, as a, as a society, of course you'll have to pay, even, if, even at home, even at work, even in private sector, you have to pay people so that they work. You have to compensate them so that they stop going to hustle outside there. So that, I mean, if you are not paid well, you would be hustling somewhere, you'd have high, so you have to be compensated for you to come and sit here, right? So members of parliament, for us to absorb the public from this, huge debt from this huge uh, 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 mis misuse of money and, and, and actually at times it's not even misuse, it's just that we do not direct our money to the right use. So members of parliament will be compensated for that. And I said again, I don't want to belabor that point, but I, I want to say something. These are symptoms of a real problem. Mm -hmm. And what is a real problem? The, even this public debt that you see is a symptom of a real problem. Our problem is that we are losing a lot of money to other countries. We are losing money to other countries willingly. When we sit here and we talk about the public debt and you say we are paying almost, uh, I mean, 800 billion shillings a month or whatever amount it is, then you ask yourself, how much money have you sent when you're buying an Apple product? You send that money outside the country, willingly. When you go and look at this pen, this pen was bought from somewhere else, the phone, the paper that, made, uh, that has been printed on, the clothes you're wearing, the spectacles you have on, these tables, everything is imported. So first of all, we need to fix this system so that we, we put a tax structure 
that incentivizes investors into this country and even local investors so that we have I'm a producer I'm in manufacturing you know and I make tea I'm spending 25 shillings on energy to produce one kilo of tea as opposed to Pakistan where they're probably using uh, comparatively maybe five shillings to produce a kilo of tea are we able to compete globally we are not so what are we saying the, our tax system is what we need to address first all these other issues. We will talk about members of parliament today. Tomorrow we'll talk about another sector. The other day we'll talk about uh, uh, people who are selling food. The other time we'll talk about manufacturers. The other time we'll talk about the dairy industry. Like that and like that. What is the panacea? Panacea in this case would that we formulate a tax framework that enables people to invest locally. So that when you make a pen like this here in Kenya, Using the market forces, the uh, demand and supply forces, then the person outside there will make it. We find it easier to buy your pen as opposed to an imported pen. Mm -hmm. When you make garment, it will be easier for you to buy garment made locally than garment imported from another country. So that is where we need to do. So that now that is going to fix the issue of unemployment. These people that who that you find coming to these members of parliament, asking them for handouts, ask them for school fees and help and all those issues is because they're not empowered. How do we empower them? We create an environment and this is what Korea did. They first closed the economy. And right now uh, looking at the at the world the way it is because of our interconnectivity and and mm. and and, and, and uh, you know the, the seamless way of doing business we cannot close the economy completely but you can make a tax framework that encourages people to invest here to consume locally i saw and, and i'm sorry to use this example but i remember you remember sometime we were trying to say buy kenya build kenya and there's a time that the government gave directives for members of uh, of civil uh, service to be wearing some uh, locally Friday. manufactured yes, clothes on Friday. Yes, uh, you know, you know I looked at that thing and I wondered whether anybody who advised the president at that time to say that, whether they really had understood economics. Yeah? Because you see, that is how many people have we employed? It's, that directive cannot help the local manufacturers. But if you take, for example, energy, and you say that for everybody who is in manufacturing, we are going to subsidize their power input, then you will make me who is now manufacturing, or someone else who is manufacturing in Tanzania, come back home and start manufacturing here. What does that do? It creates employment, and then what does it do again? It helps build, it helps reduce the deficit on the balance of payment. So then we create employment here, we boost our economy, and we boost savings. So, so what, uh, briefly, what's your legislative priority now? Tax, of tax infrastructure. That's what you're going to be framework. focusing on. Salasia, for you, what's but, your... But I wanted to finish some, something. Briefly. briefly. And, and allow me, allow me to, to say this. I saw, I wanted to say, someone talked about the Medical uh, Health Act. And, and, and uh, it may be for the benefit, and I know Jerry knows that in 2021, Parliament passed an amendment or a bill in, in the Health Act that criminalized people or a hospital, someone in charge of a hospital, not receiving a patient and treating them in case of an emergency, mm -hmm. just because you've not put a deposit. Mm -hmm. And also criminalized someone in charge of a hospital, retaining a body and not taking and not discharging a body, waiting to effect you to pay the bill. It is criminal. And I am now coming with a, with a, with a bill, or with an amendment to that bill again, in, on the floor of the parliament. To say, because you see, like, one of the biggest problems that people have economically is, is the health uh, issue. Mm. Once you have a, someone who is sick in your, in, your, in your household, then you're completely facing uh, starvation and you're facing abject poverty. Mm. So the only way to fix that is that we have a healthcare system where doctors and medical practitioners are gods. If you go to, to hospital today and you're given a bill of 200,000 shillings, you have no recourse. There's nobody you can go asking what exactly are these items. Mm. If you go to a hotel and got a cup of tea, you would know that I should not pay 1,000 shillings for this cup of tea. Fair you, would, point. you would know it so should be So what will your amendment look like? Now the amendment will mm. be that we're going to create an infrastructure where we put something called independent medical adjudicators who are able now to come and adjudicate into this problem so that when you're given a bill, even before NHF pays, even before your private insurance pays, someone interrogates that bill okay. and says you cannot charge this because this person came complaining of, uh, complaining of pain in the eye and we do not know why you're doing an x-ray of the small toe. Okay. You okay. know, and okay. we do not know why you charged all this amount. And then now they're able to say, okay, this is the chronology of the, of the, of the charge of the test that you shall have done. Yes. Before coming to that point. Okay. And uh, this is the amount that you should 
you should actually charge this person. Okay, okay fair enough. What's, what's your plan? <coughs> okay. My priority? point is I just want to correct my friend, uh, our analyst Maliba. You have just said that uh, as an MP, you can go and direct that uh, you, check, you write the check of 5,000. 5, it's not acceptable because... <coughs> Looking at the CDF structure, even the MP is not even, even the money of the operation is not even near close there. Even the, there is a committee, there is a separation of power, there is a constituent, there are different offices there. He's only there to oversight. So you cannot say that uh, the MP can just, it's uh, under his masses and do whatever. So there maybe you have to go and read about the structures of the CDF. So uh, number two, coming to the point, uh, there's this point about what me as from where I sit. Yes. We want to see, like Kenya, we look at the economy right now, the remittance, the workforce that we are exporting is the main revenue that Kenya is uh, benefiting right now. So we think about how to improve our education system, and I support uh, the CBC. It's only one or two things people are crying, because right now we find like every year we are throwing thousands of thousands of, of uh, graduates to the job market, but there's not those job markets. Number two, we are talking about, uh, about the, 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 we need to have to improve on the infrastructure. Looking at the agriculture is the only, because Kenya is an agricultural economy, we want to legislate on issues on how we can improve. In fact, that agency called AFA has not, so, has not done so much in terms of uh, uh, creating uh, a, a agriculture to be the best to, way to go. Then we look about uh, telling the government to avoid uh, uh, borrowing from locally, because it's one of the ways that uh, has suppressed and make, weakened the Kenya shilling. And this is why we are experiencing a lot of uh, inflation. And we also want those companies like Mia Sugar, we want it to be back, Chemi Lills, the Moroni. We want those are uh, where the, the, the youth can, private investment, where Kenya can, uh, many uh, job opportunities can be created. And these other things of uh, budget coming from the ministries. We want the budget to come from the legislatures they, because they are the people's representative. They know what is best for the, our, our nini. Those, those are the only few things that I, I think can help uh, fix this uh, economy. Which will will you personally champion them? Are you going? Yeah, to we are champion. In fact, I've challenged uh, the 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 the, uh, the 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 professionals from the budget. They have come up with a well. They know, like I challenge them. You people, you know what is the problem that is facing Kenya in terms of the inflation. So they, we challenge them. They will be coming up with the bills and we'll be legislating those bills and so that uh, the corrective measures and even same to the foreign affair ministry of foreign affair. They came also the with the same. So that is what we are going to legislate and make sure that uh, they, we fix the economy of this country in the next one year. And we also want, we don't want the government to invest a lot in infrastructure. Uh, what they have done enough. We want just like my brother, what he has talked about, uh, tax in, incentives, uh, subsidies, uh, things that will just make money be in the pocket of the people. That, because that is what the hustler thing. People want money in their pocket. So, so I think uh, that is what I can... That is your priority. Jerry, what's your legislative priority? <laughs> I think first, um, um, let me respond to him. Um, he, he has asserted that um, NGCDF violates or rather infringes on the doctrine of the separation of powers. And that is something that can be cured. You know, um, we know that the, um, the, the, the court, rather the litigation that was happening was around um, the issues of the 2.5 allocation and the issues of whether it went to um, Senate for approval or rather whether the procedures were followed and the issues of that uh, members of parliament sit in the um, administration of the fund. So at the end of the day, these are issues that can be resolved, but we must fix the system first before we say, now let us take away NGCDF, because the Kenyan people need it. And until we fix our systems, they, they, then it has to be in place so that um, at least our people can benefit and can see um, the reason for um, voting in these members of parliament. Uh, because you take away that, then there is nothing that they're actually left to do. Because at the end of the day, uh, I believe that beyond that, there is representation. You take away what? You take away the NGCDF. There's nothing they are left to do? No, there's not much they are left to do. There's representation, there's legislation, yes, there's I'm oversight, saying, there, there are core duties. But you see, that is part of it. That is part of it because they are urgent needs of the people and they must be met. We must look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You're not just telling me to go legislate about a child um, being allocated bursary directly from the government, but there is no structure for that.
So we must fix the issues that are there first in our system so that we are able to at least take away these other things and say, um, uh, Gigi will not be facing an issue of a child saying, I am not able to attend school because I have no school fees. Um, the national government is supposed to directly um, facilitate that, but they have not done it. Gigi is the closest person that um, a constituent can reach before they reach anyone in the national government. So he is a representation, or rather a representation of what um, they purport the national government is. So at the end of the day, if you tell, um, um, if you tell your constituent that no, go demand it from the government, no, it's a right. We have rights which are in the constitution which have never been, been met. So at the end of the day, let us have um, a round table discussion about it so that mm. we see how to go around the issues. And um, I believe those are things that can be cured and they are things that we are going to look um, at in Parliament. Um, my key legislation will be around reproductive health. Um, I know we had a very sectionalized um, bill in the 12th Parliament. So we need to come um, and sit and talk <coughs> to the community and see how can we fix these issues. Um, they raised issues of, um, there, were, there were issues of uh, introduction of um, the, the use of um, family planning, which they were averse to. But we have the issue of teenage pregnancies. You know, we are in the 21st century and we have to deal with um, issues in this century as they are and facts as they are, because facts are stubborn. They do not go away. You cannot wish them away. Um, I will also be looking at uh, mental health. Mental health is a big and major issue in Kenya. And I believe that um, in my capacity as a woman representative, um, the kitty that we have is, we are located seven million per constituency, even if I wanted to, to the very best of my capacity. I'm not able to offer long-term solutions with what we have. So I believe it is something the national government should undertake in um, conjunction with the county government. We devolved health care, which I believe um, partially was such a bad decision by the government. You go around in our counties and you talk to the regular Mwananchi and they can tell you for a fact that people are suffering. Okay, oh. although it was the 2010 constitution that devolved health care, which yes. Kenyans overwhelmingly voted for. Yes. But so you disagree, for you it hasn't worked? It has, there are major issues that we need to fix. It can work, but there are major issues that we need to fix. Okay, Maliba. Uh, can you allow me to just respond to Mishimiwa Salasia? By the way, he's my kinsman. Uh, <laughs> all of us are Wangas. <laughs> you know, the future of this country is very much Wanga. You're declaring now, <laughs> any possible conflict of interest before you, you continue. Go so, ahead. So uh, just moving on, so if you listen to him on, on CDF, NGCDF, and you listen to Mishimiwa and Jerry on CDF, you realize it's like it goes oxymoronic. Now, he says that, of course, the MP doesn't have a touch, there's the structures and everything else. I would know because somewhere, someplace, when consultants are working on the review, especially in 2015, when the, 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 the act was actually being reviewed, I somehow helped some other team somewhere that was working on it. I don't want to go into that. There's the client confidentiality that you don't talk about that. But I need to say this, that uh, be that as it may, it is impossible to be in the CDF if you are opposed to the member of parliament. In fact, there is a window where if a member of parliament, God forbid, dies, the whole CDF goes home. The committee goes home. If he has no role to play, if he has got nothing to actually uh, do with that, why would his exit, for example, if there's a by-election, well, why would we change? So there is what is the Jew and there is then de facto. There's a way law goes around. You know, these guys are in parliament, so they are making laws. If we already have got a constitution, why do we need lawmakers, for example? then we know that law is a continuous making process, right? Otherwise, we will just have a constitution and then people go home. So there is what is the Jew and there is what is de facto. I, I don't want to be labor on that. He spoke about CBC. Uh, CBC is good, of course, but the implementation is actually terrible. And we all know that the road to hell is littered with good intentions. With good intent. Paved. So uh, this Fact. is the only system where you find children are doing their homework in a textbook. We grew up in a place where you would actually inherit textbook from so somebody designed this that, uh, as in you will always buy new books, mm -hmm. and there is no passing on. Somehow, the implementation of this thing, it's, we are doing CBC for the elementary education and CBET at the higher level. Why can't we do CBC the way CBET is actually being done? We have got everything but CBC. This, whatever happens down the here is not CBC. But I, I needed to actually say this, that for me, the priorities that parliamentarians should actually focus on should not be uh, rocket science. We had the first liberation. Gigi ni mujuku wa maumau fighter, so he will know this. The first liberation was <laughs> us chasing out the Muzungu. 
uh, and we got independence. The second liberation is what is actually embodied in the Constitution 2010. It's about uh, democracy, it's about good governance, and that is embodied in the Constitution 2010. But inside the Constitution 2010, then we go forward and project what we want as the third and final liberation. Those are my words. That is Article 43. Article 43 has got nine issues that for them should be a priority. They need to look at that. Access to health. Is a big issue. That is, in Article 43, this parliament should be an Article 43 parliament. Access to health, access to housing, freedom from hunger, let me just call that food security, uh, water, clean water and sanitation, uh, social security, education. And when it comes to education, you know, we have gotten around, we have degreenized the country even though just 3% of Kenyans have got, have got degrees anyway. Literally everything is about a degree and the future of work, even if you were to go, the all leading um, uh, technology companies today, when you go there, your papers are secondary. We will give you a task, go to Google today, you, they will give you a task. If you can do it, then we can talk about your papers. It's about competence and that is where CBC wanted to go. So when we're talking about education, for example, we've got a lot of people <coughs> who are good in academia but they are not just competent to do anything. So we probably need to borrow something like what is happening in Barbados. When you are doing a, a, a mass retraining mm. and reorienting, they've got something they call NTI, National Transformation Initiative, where people are getting skills that are employable skills so that people, even we're talking about the Hustler Fund, for example, the Hustler Fund will not be effective if, for example, we do not retrain the people because the software is important. Mm. You cannot throw money at problems and expect that money. You know, we have got a default uh, setting in this country that if there is a problem, throw money at that problem. And we never get solutions out of that. So education is actually under Article 43 <clears throat> as an issue. Are we able to retrain, mass retrain? Because people have come out of college and they have nothing to do, for example. You went and did anthropology. It's a very important course, yes, but uh, you do not have got anywhere to be employed. So you go around walking around with your certificates and your shoe gets down and we have got very long tales and stories. Why can't we retrain people, mass retrain people? We have got a hustler fund promise, for example. Retrain, give them money. Borrow NTI from Barbados, for example, and see how it works out. Uh, access to emergency uh, health care we still have got issues. You saw the other day activist Bonifas Mwangi having a scene at a, a local hospital. Mm. That has not been worked on. It is in Article 43. Things still happen. And then uh, protecting the vulnerable. So for members of parliament who are out there, you don't need rocket science. Just look at Article 43. That is the third and final liberation. Okay. Whatever way you look at it, whether it's at macro or micro, design things and solutions around that. That is where we want to go. So people will talk about we want money in the pocket. Mm. For what? Of course, for Article 3 purposes. 43, economic and social rights. Econ yes. Uh, is, is the headline of that. Yeah. Gigi, before you make your point, can I read some tweets? Then allow you yeah, to speak? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at what Kenyans are saying this morning. 2 to 4 to the SMS line. I'll also try and read some SMSs. Um, but let's look at uh, what you were saying on uh, Twitter using the hashtag daybreak. Uh, Bob Otieno, you, know, you say young legislators won't bring any meaningful changes because they will dance to the political tunes of their party bosses and parties which sponsor them. Okay, I'll give them in their final shots a chance to respond to that. Kinyua Muchoki, uh, Mushoki, I think our elected leaders are trying so hard to convince us that they need to be paid more. I thought they'd be demanding for more development money. Did we elect bankrupt individuals? My goodness, Kinyua, that's a sharp <laughs> Question. DY956, the question and expectations from legislators to the constituents is a hypothetical alib alibi. Their mandate is clear and includes duties outlined in the constitution. Okay. No name. You say CDF seized when we passed a new constitution with a devolved government via devolution. All right. Sam must give. It is malicious for an employee to start reviewing their terms of engagement immediately after signing the contract. <laughs> Kenya does not have money. We should be satisfied with what is on the table. MPs should spare us their greed. <laughs> okay. Quinise Pacho, you say exit CDF comes Hustlers Fund. We hope Hustlers Fund does well. CDF was good, but it was misused by MPs, cronies, and fund officials in some places, just like fuel and other subsidies. Let them focus on how, anchor, how to anchor the Hustlers Fund in the law. Kunise Pacho. Okay. Do we have any others? Okay, that's the last tweet. I'll, I'll try and see if I can read your uh, SMSs uh, before, before we wrap it up. Uh, I think I have two minutes for each of you, a minute for each of you. Uh, Gigi, let me start with you. 
uh, I'll say the solution to this country's problems is revamping the economy. You know, we'll talk about, we, everyone will complain about something. As long as we have a small cake and everybody wants a piece of it. We must think of how to expand our economy. And our economy will not be expanded by external people or external governments or external uh, partners. We have to come and sit. And that is why our government of uh, Kenya Kwanza, we said the first thing, even when you look at our, at our, uh, at our way of working, including the subsidies, we said we want to go back to production. What are we doing? Why do we have a problem of food, for example? We have a problem of food. When you're talking about Article 43, we have a problem feeding our people because we do not produce. What is our productivity? Our maize, for example, we produce 25 bags per acre. Average countries in our neighborhood produce about 50, 52 bags an acre. We have to start having conversations, and we must now go another level and start saying, how do we increase productivity? Mm. Is it, is it uh, fertilizer? Is it the quality of seeds? Is it GMO? Is it, we must have, start having conversations that are completely out of the norm so that we fix our economy. We must fix our tax system such that it allows people to invest here. We must go to industrialization. In fact, you know, the last regime that talked about the, four, the big four agenda, it was very good if it was properly implemented. And that is what we're saying, for example, in issues of housing. Housing as, a, as, a, as an industry could be used to create a lot of jobs here. Mm. Because you say, you're going to do, go to some countries, go to Qatar, for example. You find that all their houses are similar because they have now done what we call a mass production of houses. So when you do mass production of houses and you stop these designer things, if you go, if you come to Kenya, everybody has their own design. So it's, it's, it's like the way you, people want to wear designer suits that it's only produced for you and it's tailor made for you mm -hmm. and nobody has a suit, has a suit like that. that That's sense. how we do houses. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do houses that we're going to deconstruct so that we do all of them equally. We have same doors, same designs, same windows, same hinges, same everything, and then they're going to be locally produced here. Okay. We have TVETs that we're going to empower so that they anchor, they get into that and they pitch somewhere on, the, on that platform and they're able to produce uh, uh, these this, uh, items and get into the market. Okay, thank you for that. Salasia, your parting shot? Uh, my parting shot is that um, we have to stop this issue of uh, monopoly in terms of power production. By the next two, one, two years from now, we should allow the other independent uh, farms that can introduce uh, power generation in that uh, anyone can choose where to buy his uh, power. And this one will at least reduce uh, this issue of uh, monopolizing the, the issue of the, uh, the issue of the power, the cost of power. Then CBC, let us impress it where it is. Uh, they have some challenges. Let us uh, let us uh, let us impress it. It's going to heal this country. The issue of the CDF, CDF is there to stay. We are telling those who are like Yatani, go home uh, safely. We okay. love you. Uh, the issue of uh, the issue of uh, the, the, the issue of uh, the Kenya Kwanza should try and, uh, and, and, uh, and invest much in agriculture. This one, and uh, try to bring more private, uh, develop more in private investment, private uh, sector. This will create more jobs, I think. Th thank you very much for that. And Jerry, my now, what's your parting shot? Uh, you know, from the tweets, I thought it's damned if we do, <coughs> damned if we don't. Uh, but at the end of the day, I believe we need to have a conversation and we need to have it from a, a perspective of where we're not judging or suspicious of each other. Um, the members of parliament, are elected by the people and I believe the people um, reviewed us, they listened to us and they evaluated us and sent us to parliament to represent them. So we can no longer then um, have that accusatory, you know, back and forth. Um, so we need to sit and say that um, this is where we are at, this is where we want to go and this is what we need to do um, to get there. So we need, if we need to fix agriculture, healthcare, the education system, you know, let it be a consultative process so that at the end of the day, everybody um, feels that their needs have been met. And um, I would implore, and I know that we will, um, with my colleagues here, be representing the young people of this nation, the government um, is, is not able, perhaps, to um, generate as many um, job opportunities as um, needs to be um, met by um, the, the young populace or rather to match the young populace. And um, so at the end of the day, I believe we will be pushing for um, a conducive um, climate uh, or for a conducive environment where entrepreneurs can thrive. And I believe the Hustlers Fund will be able to um, 
push for young people of this nation um, to feel that they are part and parcel of the social, political and economic development of Kenya. Okay, thank you for that. Maliba, one minute, what's your parting shot? My parting shot starts here. Uh, we have had IBC issues and electoral problems. Parliament should actually prioritize that. They should not wait until 20... 26. Uh, 26 and start doing that, we will have those problems. Fix IBC and the electoral problems now. Uh, two, SRC pay MPs well, because number three, we want NGCDF to go to the counties. Uh, we want parliament to be proper parliament. The voice of the people, the people's watchmen, to fight, represent, defend people and pass laws that will make the republic better. And finally, to the Kenya Kwanzaa government, you represent a watershed moment in the history of our country. The Fifth Republic must be different because uh, there's so much hope put into this particular government. Uh, the guys who are seated here, but it doesn't really matter whether you are in Kenya Kwanza or in, you are in Azimio. At this particular time, the Fifth Republic, of course, the administration is led by Kenya Kwanza. As it is, they must actually bring to bear the promise and the hope that we've actually given to them. We hope that the President William Ruto will not just uh, come back from the, after doing so well at the UN, uh, he'll not just come back and then disappoint us. I hope to see women uh, nominated in his cabinet. I hope to see young people in his cabinet. He has brought back the CAS position and he's following the law. I hope again that uh, it will be representative, that we will see the face of Kenya. Mm. And that on the watch of the Fifth Republic under Kenya Kwanzaa, we will have two things, the spirit of Article 10 being lived and the spirit of Article 43 being realized. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much for that. Um, let me read two other messages before we wrap this up. Somebody says, hi Wahiga, you have the right group in studio, very intelligent. They indeed came to parliament to address Kenyan's challenges. They are very vibrant, reasoning outside and inside the box. Great, lively engagement. So it's not all negative feedback. Some of you are referencing that. But I also need to read this one. Gige Karioki, so that you don't say I'm unfair, that I'm only picking one type of SMSs. Gige Karioki from Nairobi says, CDF established many central banks in constituencies. MPs should know what their constitutional roles are, restrict themselves to that. As legislators, they should come up with laws to help Kenyans make money to meet their needs. Don't give me money. Help me make my money Amen. for my needs. We're going to wrap it up there. Let me thank my guests. We've had Gigi Kagombe, MP Gatondo South. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Karibu Sana. We've had Arnold Maliba, who's a public policy analyst. We've had Njeri Maina, woman rep Kirinyaga. And we've had Peter Salasia, who's the MP of Mumias East. We'll keep having sessions like this. We'll, we'll figure out. I think uh, I've seen an announcement that the, uh, the president will, uh, open, will address parliament next week on the 29th. The 29th. 29th. Yes. We have the joint sitting of uh, uh, both houses of parliament. Houses of parliament. Yes. And then after that, down to business. We'll be following you guys closely. And now you've come on TV, Kenya. And then next time we come and do the role of media in development of this country. Oh, the role of media. You're yes. giving me a show idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the role of I'll media. tell you whether so we can I'll tell you the role right. that we tend <laughs> to play so that you educate these people so that, you know, those things that you're asking, whose work is it? Yes. Is media. And anyway, we'll come to that. Speaking as someone who worked in a media house. Yes, I know. That's a fair, fair <laughs> point. Let me thank my guests and thank you to viewers who tuned in. Asante Sana. Uh, thank you for all the messages you sent in. 2242 has been the SMS line. Hashtag Daybreak. The show continues, just different content. So please don't touch that dial. Uh, we'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in. I think it's we're up next with Level Up. Friday, Roy T Boy uh, will be on the ones and twos, uh, whatever that means. All right, the show continues. Stay with us. <laughs>